Whispering, the first big hit for the Paul Whiteman Orchestra, but more about that later. Paul was born into a musical family. His father was supervisor of music in Denver's public schools, and he's credited with starting the first high school orchestra in the United States. Paul's mother and sister were singers, but at first, young Paul rebelled against music. His mother was determined her son would be a musician and gave him a violin to begin lessons with. Equally determined not to learn, Paul smashed the instrument and was made mow lawns for some time to earn the money to replace it. By the time he was in high school, Paul was a fine violinist and played in the school orchestra. Still in his teens, he joined the Denver Symphony as first violist and continued as a classical musician after he graduated from school. He moved to California and joined the San Francisco People's Symphony and appeared with them at the 1915 San Francisco World's Fair. When America entered World War I, Paul enlisted in the Navy and formed a 40-piece sailor jazz band. By the time he was discharged, Paul Whiteman was smitten with the new jazz. And in 1919, he gathered a group of nine musicians together and the new orchestra played at the swankiest hotels along the west coast of America, winding up with a smash engagement at the Alexandria in Los Angeles, where Hollywood greats like Charlie Chaplin, Douglas Fairbanks and Fatty Arbuckle would come from the audience to join in on some of the numbers. His fame soon spread, particularly word of his new style of symphonic jazz, and Whiteman was signed to play at Atlantic City's Ambassador Hotel. After a slow start, the band developed a large following, and the fans were soon dancing to Paul's fast-paced versions of current hits. Thank you. 
After hearing Paul Whiteman's orchestra perform and recognising his growing popularity, the Victor Talking Machine Company, the forerunner of RCA Records, invited Whiteman to record for them. He was hesitant at first and terrified. Later, he reminisced, we were so scared we postponed the recording date four times before we made the records. And then we made four records in two hours. Whispering was one of them, and it sold 1,800,000 copies and was Whiteman's first big hit in a succession of hundreds upon hundreds of recordings he was to make during the next 25 years. With all your might Stretch your loving arms straight out in space Then you do the eagle rock With style and grace Swing your foot way around Then bring it back That's what I call ball of the jack First, you take your time You hold your baby tight Don't get out of line you go from left to right Step around the door You do it nice and light Round and round Round and round Round and round Everybody start balling Start crawling, bar ball in the jack. Everybody start swaying from left to the right. Then you twist around, twist around with all your might. Stretch your love and arms straight out in space. Then you do the eagle rock with style and grace. Swing your foot way around and bring it back. Please be careful, she might crack. That's what I call ball of the jack. It's been done, cabarets, everyone has got the praise. Let's do it. Ball in the jack, 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 ball in the jack. Offers from New York City lured Whiteman away from Atlantic City, and during 1920, the cream of New York society flocked to the Palais Royal, where the Whiteman Orchestra was performing. From here on, Paul Whiteman was a fixture of America's popular music. He organized Whiteman bands at clubs and hotels across the country. These bands leased the arrangements and were permitted to use the Paul Whiteman name in their billing. Paul personally played at all the important events, and the Whiteman Orchestra was the first to play New York's famed Palace Theatre. In 1922, the orchestra featured in George White's Scandals, and in 1923, went to London to play at the Hippodrome in a big review called Brighter London. The Prince of Wales became a big Whiteman fan. The orchestra returned to New York in triumph and went into the Ziegfeld Follies of 1923. During the run of this show, Paul announced his plans to hold a jazz concert on Lincoln's birthday, February the 12th, 1924. And he commissioned Victor Herbert and George Gershwin to create new works for it. The Aeolian Hall was the venue, and musical history was made that night. The Whiteman Orchestra, augmented to 23 musicians, opened the concert with selections demonstrating the development of modern jazz from its early roots in the blues. Zez Confrey made a guest appearance and played his well-known composition, Kitten on the Keys. 
there was a suite of serenades by Victor Herbert. And finally, George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, orchestrated by Whiteman's arranger, a young man named Ferdy Grofi, and was played by the composer. Thirty-two years later, at a recording session to celebrate Paul Whiteman's 50th anniversary as a musician, Rhapsody in Blue was played by Eugene Weed. <laughs>
in blue, 
by George Gershwin. Paul Whiteman was the first person to encourage George Gershwin to extend his talents and write serious music. Over the years, some of the brightest names in popular musical history were members of the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. His alumni included Bix Beiderbeck, Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey, Jack Teagarden, Bunny Berrigan, Joe Venuti, Eddie Lang, Frankie Trumbauer, Red Nichols and Harry Bus. Ferde Grofe, Lenny Hayton and Toots Camerata worked as his arrangers and Grofe's Grand Canyon Suite was introduced by the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. Mildred Bailey, Morton Downey, Dinah Shaw, Johnny Mercer and Billie Holiday all sang with the Whiteman Orchestra and in 1926 he was joined by Harry Barris, Al Rinker and Bing Crosby. A vocal group Whiteman called the Rhythm Boys. This recording of Mississippi Mud was one of the first they made. Personnel included Bix Beiderbeck, Frankie Trumbauer, Matt Malneck, and the female voice belongs to Irene Taylor. were very low-key for a couple of years, playing second fiddle to Whiteman's other featured vocalists. P-O-N-S-P-A-N-T-I-N-O-P-L-E-Constantinople 
Young were joined by the Rhythm Boys on the comedy trifle Constantinople. It was difficult to pick out Bing Crosby's voice on the recording made in May 1928. Only one month later, Bing, Austin Young, Charles Gaylord and Jack Fulton recorded I'm on the crest of a wave. The song was given an interesting arrangement by Ferdy Grofe. Thank you. 
the Paul Whiteman Orchestra recorded extensively in 1928. And at the same June session when I'm on the Crest of a Wave was recorded, Bing Crosby, Al Rinker and Harry Barris provided the vocal for the amusing That's My Weakness Now. By 1929, it was clear that Bing Crosby was destined to be a big star, and Paul Whiteman was giving him solo spots. If I had a talking picture of you, a hit in the Janet Gaynor Charles Farrell film Sunny Side Up was recorded on October the 16th, 1929. If I had a talking picture of you, 
I would run it every time I felt blue I would sit there in the gloom Of my lonely little room And applaud each time you whispered I love you, love you On the screen the moment you came in view We would talk the whole thing over We do I would give ten shows a day And a midnight matinee If I had a talking picture of you Whiteman's orchestra starred on Broadway in Billy Rose's 1935 super extravaganza, Jumbo. And in 1936, they were in an even bigger Billy Rose show at the Texas Sesquicentennial Exhibition. 600 performers played in front of 60-foot high scenery. And the flamboyancy suited Whiteman's style and personality to a T. He was never overbearing, but was a master of the grandiose. Over the years, the orchestra appeared in five films, The King of Jazz, Thanks a Million, Strike Up the Band, Rhapsody in Blue, which was the Gershwin story, and The Fabulous Dorseys. During the 40s, Paul's personal appearances became less frequent, and by the advent of television, he no longer had a set orchestra, but he continued to remain very much in view. He hosted a television series that featured over 50 big bands in 1955. And in 1956, led a group of his illustrious alumni through his 50th anniversary album. Eddie Manson, who had played harmonica with the Whiteman Orchestra, starred on the Limehouse Blues track.
Whiteman's enthusiasm, his gregariousness, and his love of music never abated. He died in 1967, three months before his 77th birthday. Let's end with a 1927 recording of the Paul Whiteman Orchestra with cornetist Henry Bush playing When Day Is Done. <laughs> 